What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my Twisted Life TV with Poetry. I am Poetry. This is the last part of Ambitions. Lord Jesus, why y'all didn't say nothing? <laughs> when I did the last little uh, update on Ambitions, I didn't realize I had not watched the full episode. I guess because I was having difficulties with On Demand that it wasn't showing all the way through. I thought I had watched the whole episode and that there was another episode for the mid-season finale. No, child, no. I hadn't finished the whole damn episode. I finished it today. Ooh, Jesus. That was good. Y'all was right. The mid-season finale was off the chain. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Y'all give me a second. I got pain going through my chest right now. All better. I don't know what that was. I sat down and that pain just struck me right here. It was going from here down to my, my navel. Oh, I'm not having a heart attack. Don't don't think that. Um, <clears throat> I have an anxiety attack every once in a while. Maybe that's what that was. I don't know. Anyway, it's gone. It went that quick. But okay, back to ambitions. Didn't nobody tell me. Y'all was good. Y'all know how I hate spoilers. And not one single person in the comment section told me what had happened at the end of the episode that I had not watched. We're going to try to make this short, sweet, and simple. And I can't wait for Ambitions to come back later on in the winter season. Because when, um, when Greenleaf go on their mid-season break, that's when Ambitions come back. Baby, baby, baby. Yep. Carly. Let me, I'm just going to go by person by person. We already know that Lori told her daddy, you know, he was messing around. She was messing around with Carly. And Pure Ford didn't care. He want her to use her and abuse her as much as possible. The same thing her mama, Juno, proceeded to do. Use her to your benefit. And Lori seemed to be all in and down for that. Okay. Well, Carly made a decision. I ain't staying around for this. Her daddy had already sat her down, had a conversation with her about this opportunity to go study and become a better actress, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. That's when um, Pop Carlisle busted in with the Instagram photo saying, who the hell are you sleeping with and why is this trash on my phone? You better make it stop. Yeah. So, um, but, but Evan wasn't upset about his daughter being a lesbian. He wasn't, he didn't care about that. What he cared about was Pop Carlisle getting locked up in his damn house. Remember that? Okay, well, Carly said, you know what? I called a man up about the doggone uh, program and see if he had an opening next year. He told me he had a cancellation this year, so guess what? I'm moving. I'm up out this piece. Deuces, two sheets to the wind. I'm gone, right? And be like, no, no, wait a minute. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I don't want my only daughter to leave. I'm, give me time to prepare. I want you to take this opportunity, but no, I love you too much. Wait, wait. <laughs> and um, Carly said, you know what? Daddy, I understand you. I love you, but I need to get away from my damn mama. Mm -mm. I can't do her no more. Not at all. And this is my opportunity to be free from her and her conniving ass ways. And Stephanie come in like, you know what? On one hand, I want you to go. One hand, I will say stay. But what you're not going to do is be up in the underneath the Lord Pure for it. And so Carly went ahead and, and exposed the fact that yeah, my mama paid off some escorts to su seduce the woman. Lori was not in any way seduced, honey, baby child. She walked right on into there with willing and open legs. She was not seduced. Okay. Um, but two, that's what she think. So, uh, no, Stephanie, make no apologies. <clears throat> I don't give a damn. You're not going to be with a Pure for you know, Evan, like, that's your girlfriend. No, that ain't, a, it don't even use the word friend in relation to pure voice up in this joint. That's how Stephanie feeling. Carly was like, this is exactly why I'm leaving, Daddy. I love you, but I got to go. He's like, okay, well, if you're going to leave, please let me know everything that's going on first before you leave. Let I need to know what's going on, <clears throat> on with you. She's like, cool, I'm going to do that. Okay, pop call out. Bossed up this episode, y'all. Y'all didn't tell me. I was excited to see this. He's sitting up on Greg Peters' office like, what? Sitting on swole, you know, like, hey, check this out. You my bitch now. 
Your daddy done gave me permission. He, he first told me that you was hands off, but now he said that is no more. You ain't got to worry about your cousin coming after you because if you sleep with my damn daughter again, it's going to be me on your ass. I'm going to put two shots to the dome. You know what I'm saying? Greg was like, who do you think you talk to? I'm talking to you, boy. You better sit your little pink ass. He told him to sit his pink ass down. I like the fell out. I was like, oh, no, nah, did he say that? You know, but Greg, Greg wasn't, Greg ain't no punk. You know what I'm saying? He came back and popped call out like, you don't know who you fucking with. But Pop said, you ain't ready for me, son. You ain't, you ain't about that life. Everything you do, when you breathe, when you wipe your ass, I got to approve it first. You better believe that. Try me. Try me. Okay? I was like, ooh. Ooh. Pop call out. <laughs> yes. Pop call out. Okay. So, Daphne hit uh, Evan up. Or well, somebody hit Evan up to say, come through. My husband gonna be out of town. Meet me at the regular spot. All right, Evan feeling himself like, oh, let me go get a little bit of a little dab dab. You know what I'm saying? He come in, he feeling some kind of way. Cause you know, his daddy just busted him out about the fact he know he got another kid out there. He didn't specifically say he knew Joaquin was the kid, but he knew it was another kid out there. So, you know, he was like, all right, daddy, check me on that ass. Okay, cool. So he feeling some kind of way, you know, dealing with Carly's situation, Stephanie crazy ass, all that there. Evan, like, you know what? We're going to switch roles up tonight. He walk in, take off his clothes, fold up his nice jacket, all nice and neat. Like, we're we going to switch up. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be the uh, submissive. I'm going to be the dominant night, boo. He gets up in the bed. Daphne dead as a doorknob, baby. Just dead, dead, handcuffed to the bed. The bow is constricted around her neck. Daphne's dead. Who the fuck took her out? Who is her husband? I want to know who's. I want to know who her husband was. Is it her husband retaliating? That's what I want to know, y'all. What y'all think? Y'all think it's definitely husband, or who else know? The only other person that knew that Daphne was the mistress was Kent, right? And Amora. That's all they really knew. Hmm. It's supposed to speaking of Amora. Oh, this scene upsets me, y'all. This upsets me. Amora feeling some kind of way, you know she. Titus to find out the truth about her and Damien. And, um, but she need her husband back. She want her husband back. She was just down there with Herschel. Herschel killed herself in front of her. Well, not in front of her. But while she was down there trying to interview him, he killed herself in the other room. And it all had to do with Greg Peters. You know, Amara was with by Greg Peters. Hey, look here. Herschel killed herself. I know you had something to do with it. You was on the phone with him right before he pulled the, uh, the, the shot. And Greg, like, girl, go on here with that BS. You ain't, you ain't got nothing on me. Ain't got nothing. Ain't got nothing on me. You know what I'm saying? But Amara told him, look her, you better stay away from Rondell. Stay away from Rondell. I'm going to get that ass. Trust and believe that, sir. I'm going to be on you. On you like white on rice. And he was like, look, unless you could have charged me something, you might need a bounce. She cute that ass. I don't get up out of here. She said, okay. You think I'm playing with me? You think I'm playing? You think I'm playing? All right. I got you, fool. Well, Stephanie, uh, Amara needed some consoling. So she went to the one person she know. My baby daddy. My husband, Titus. I, you know, Titus in his feelings. Like, what the fuck are you doing here? When I said it's over, it's over. I meant that shit. He said, he said I don't know why you didn't, don't see it, but since it's not clear, I'm going to tell you. If this ain't got shit to do with danger, what the fuck are you up in here for? So she tells him about her show. He a man. He a compassionate man. He like, damn, that's fucked up. I'm sorry to hear that. That's got to be rough. Then he had to think to himself, like, okay. I want to be there for I'm going to tell her, as much as I want to be there for you. I can't right now. Sorry about that, baby. Mm. So she leaves out. And she's before she goes, she said, hey, well, at least tell me where you stand. So if I have any problems with Deja, you know, I can come to you. You know, he said, I'm at the duck working too, 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 you know. Uh, so she leaves. Broken hearted. Broken hearted. I was broken hearted. I was broken hearted. Like, damn, Titus. Damn, I understand, but damn, you know, like it was a feeling. Okay, so, <sighs> Titus. <sighs> Titus, Titus, Titus Hughes. He still finally even had his settlement meeting with Stephanie. Well, Stephanie had already found out from um, Damien that Amara and Titus no more and that Damien is staying at the Duckworth. So, of course, Stephanie want to have a meeting at the Duckworth restaurant. Mm -hmm. So they down there and 
having a conversation about the settlement. Titus really ain't paying attention. His mind is elsewhere. His mind is really on the more at this point. But she like, um, tell me all your secrets. You know, I done kept your secrets before. What secrets she done kept, Titus? Now nah, I don't need to know. What secrets she done kept? He's like, okay, yeah, you have. You, you kept my secrets before. What secrets have you kept? She said, well, let's go talk somewhere more in private. She caressing his hand and everything like that. Titus agree. I was like, boo, what the fuck you doing? I got mad. Like, instantly, what you mean? Okay, so later on in the episode, Amora got her little heels on, her little button-down shirt with her little cha-cha divas, you know, somewhat showing, at least it was showing some um, naked. She wasn't really showing no cleavage, but it was showing the part in between. Yeah, it was showing that part, right? So she's like, I'm finna go get my man back. Knock on the door, two, two, two. Who answers? Stephanie. Titus motherfucking Hughes. First of all, you gonna let the side piece answer the fucking door? But she answered the door in her robe and her little white bra. Hey, girl. Stephanie, like, what the, uh, like, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, this is just a little payback, bitch. Just a little payback. Payback? Now, Titus, you ain't in the background here and Stephanie call it. Tell your wife this is payback. That this was all a setup. This was all a plan. Amara is dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. Oh, like you got me fucked up. And Stephanie's like, no, you got me fucked up. She opened the door and there is Titus standing half naked. And he might have been all the way naked. They didn't show the lower half. Titus motherfucker. I want a divorce. I want a divorce. It's over. It's over between us. I was allowing you to be with Amara, but Stephanie, that's too much for me. That's too much. I can't be that girl. I can't. It's it, it, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm too mad at you for this. I am too mad at you for this, Titus motherfucking Hughes. Oh, Jesus. Bella. Well, Bella dumbass decides she wants to sleep with a uh, cortisone textiles guy. I don't forgot his damn name already. Ignacio? I think it's Ignacio. She decided, you know, I'm going to mix business with pleasure. Well, we've learned last episode that he was setting some shit up. He had made a phone call to somebody and said, I didn't think this was going to be easy as I thought, as it, as, it, as it turned out to be. You know, we got this in the bag. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? What the fuck is he doing? Uh, somebody had put in the comment section that they thought that Evan had set him up to, like, you know, throw her off her game. She really wasn't part of the deal. Okay. This scene almost made me think that it might have been Evan, too. Because she decided to sleep with him. She had already set up the little baby cam in her bed, in, in Joaquin's bedroom, but he gonna be down for the night. She let him know all this information. You know, if you wasn't trying to sleep with him, he probably could have took advantage of your ass because you just told him that your son is gonna be knocked out for the rest of the night. Well, they in the room smashing and dashing and all that other jazz. Somebody creep in the crib. They unlock the door, come on in, and snatch Joaquin. Walk out the door right at the height of her orgasm. Click, she don't hear nothing. Baby Joaquin has gone. There can't be nobody but Evan. It can't be nobody but Evan. Who else knew that that child was yours besides your daddy and the mama? That's that's Evan. That's Evan teaching Bella a lesson. You know, my, my daddy said for me to take her all my kids. I'm taking my son. That's what I'm thinking. Y'all let me know if y'all feel that same way too. Now, speaking of daddy, I had to do this part later. Like, Pop's about to go out there and propose to Luella. He got on his sleek suit in his hunter green with his old nasty brim going on. Looking all dapper, dan up in the spot. As, as Rondell said, damn daddy. Damn daddy. That's how I was feeling too. Okay. He all happy. We happy for Rondell happy for him. You know what I'm saying? She got over her animosity about him proposing to Luella because she want her daddy to be happy. We all want him to be happy. Pops was happy, right? You know what I'm saying? Now, at, at the end of the video portion that I did see, you know, somebody rushed up on them in the alley, but not really. They thought somebody was, but it was Stephanie's dude, right? Stephanie's dude was really sent there to protect her. Well, Rondell is, is tough. She didn't want nobody protecting her, especially from Stephanie. She ain't scared of Greg Peters. He's just selling wolf tickets, yada, yada, this, yada, yada, that. 
So she sent the bodyguards away. Pops is concerned that she sent the bodyguards away. There must have been a reason for Stephanie to hire them in the first place, girl. Ain't nobody playing with you, right? But Rondell feel like, I got this. Where is Kent? Kent ain't been around in a minute. You know, where he been? He ain't been around. So anywho, Pops going out to go meet Louie to go propose to her. It's the middle of the night. Get that Cadillac out back. As soon as he step out the door, he call up on the phone and say, hey, sweet thing. I know I'm only five minutes away, but I didn't want to miss one second of your voice. I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep because I miss you, baby. And I don't want to miss a thing. That's how Pops is feeling about Lou Well right now. I don't want to miss one second of you. Not you breathing, not you sleeping, not nothing. I don't want to miss that shit. Let me call you and let you know I'm on my way to you. But while he out there in the back of the alley, somebody rolled up on him. He said, hey, senior, who else could it be but Greg Peters? Now, he had a small hand on, but it had to be Greg Peters retaliating against Rondell. Because Amara just threatened him. You know what I'm saying? Um, Pop call out. I don't see him retaliating against the mayor. For pop call out. I would see him, um, you know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think that he retaliated against the mayor's family because of what pop call out there. I don't see that. I see him more as retaliating against Rondell and getting back at pop because the whole English Rose project is, is falling. It's failed. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and it's all because of Rondell. So he walked up and said, Senior. And he shot Senior. Cold motherfucking blood. Cold motherfucking blood. Rondell heard a gunshot. She inside screaming. We next see Senior laying on the ground with the person standing above him. And, and he tell him, you kiss my black ass. I don't think he used the word black, but I was saying that. It make it seem more intense. He kissed my entirety of my black ass. That's what Pops wanted him to say. And then he shot again. Baby Pop's dead. Who killed Senior? Why would you kill Senior? I wasn't ready. I was not ready. Y'all are fucking fabulous. My viewers on this channel, y'all are awesome because y'all did not spoil that shit for me. OMG. I cannot wait for it to come back. I it, Oh, it's going to be hell come to the captain. You know, Evan in there with definitely dead body. You got his henchmen coming in and figure out what's going on. He being attacked on all fronts. They getting Evan. They gotta be Greg Peters. It gotta be. Mmm. Child. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this part of the, the recap that I didn't catch the first damn time. Oh, Lord. All right, y'all. Talk to y'all later. Peace.